In the previous videos, we have been introduced to what coordination compounds are. And we have also seen the various terms that are associated with the coordination compounds like the coordination entity, oxidation state, ligands, coordination polyhedra and so on. It is now time to familiarize ourselves with their naming conventions. You see, naming of coordination compounds can be very complex. In fact, coordination compounds themselves are quite complex. We have different types of ligands, we have different number of ligands and sometimes we have monodentate ligands, sometimes we have polydentate ligands and so on. And therefore, it is absolutely essential that we come up with a set of rules that can help us distinguish one coordination compound from the other. So by simply looking at its name, we should be able to figure out what the central metal atom is, what its oxidation state is, what are the different types of ligands, whether the ligand is a polydentate ligand or a monodentate ligand or an anionic ligand or a neutral ligand, etc. simply by looking at the name of this particular complex. Okay, so if you're ready, let's quickly look at the rules that we need to follow while naming a coordination compound. Okay, so the first rule is that we first name the cation which is followed by the name of the anion. For example, here we have CONH36Cl3 and Cl3 is the anionic part and CONH36 plus is the cationic part. So in this particular coordination compound, we will first name the cationic part which is this coordination entity and then the anionic part. Now the coordination entity need not always be the cation. For example, in this particular coordination compound, the cation is a counter ion which is K plus and the coordination entity is anionic complex, right? Now in either case, in either of these cases, the important thing to remember here is that in the naming, we will always name the cation first. It can be the coordination entity or the counter ion. It doesn't matter. What we need to do is simply name the cationic part first and then the anionic part. Now within the coordination entity, we will first name the ligand and then the central metal ion. So as we saw before, the coordination entity can be anionic or cationic as we can see in these two examples. But in either case, when we go about naming the coordination entity, we will first look at the ligand and then the central metal ion. So here the ligand is hydroxy group and the metal is zinc. And here we'll first name the ligand which is ammonia and then go about looking at the name of the central metal ion. As we already know, the ligands can be of different types. Some are anionic in nature, while the others are neutral molecules. So obviously, depending on the type of the ligands, their naming would also differ, right? So now let us quickly look at the naming of the ligands. When we have anionic ligands, the name will always end with an O. For example, when we have chloride ligands, the name would be chlorido. When we have bromide ligands, it would be bromido. And when we have hydroxy group, the name would be hydroxo. Now, it doesn't really matter if it is a bidentate or a polydentate ligand. As long as we're talking about anionic ligands, the names would end with O. So here are the names of some of the anionic ligands. Let's now look at the neutral ligands. The names of the neutral and cationic ligands are the same except aqua for water, amine for ammonia, carbonyl for CO and nitrocell for NO. Except that if you look at these groups, you can see that the names are exactly the same. O2 is dioxygen, N2 is dinitrogen and NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2 is nothing but ethylene diamine. Also named ethane. 1, 2, diamine. Correct? Now what do we do when we have more than one type of ligand? In that case, alphabetical order takes precedence. For example, in this coordination complex which is CRNS3 thrice, H2 thrice, 3 plus. So here the name of ammonia would be amine and water would be aqua, right? So which one takes precedence alphabetically? So based on alphabetical order, we would prioritize amine over aqua. Now, when we have many ligands of the same type, we use prefixes like di, tri, tetra and so on. For example, if we have a complex like CRNS3 thrice, H2O thrice, 3 plus, then the naming of the ligands would be 
triamine because we have three ammonia groups and triaqua because we have three water molecules. Now, as I mentioned before, amine takes precedence over water alphabetically. So, the naming of the ligand would be triamine triaqua chromium chloride. Because as I said before, inside a coordination entity, we will first name the ligands and then we will name the central metal atom, right? Anyway, we will get to that later how the entire uh, naming is done. But for now, understand that when we have monodentate ligands and when we have multiple of them, we first have to look at the alphabetical precedence and then we need to prefix di, tri depending on the number of ligands that we have. Now, remember, alphabetical precedence is for the ligands. We are not considering it after we use a prefix. Now, when we have polydentate ligands, instead of di, tri and tetra, we have a slightly different nomenclature, which is bis, tris and tetrakis. Bis for 2, tris for 3 and tetrakis is for 4. Now, this becomes important when we have complexes where we have both polydentate as well as monodentate ligands. For example, in this particular coordination complex, we have a monodentate ligand as well as a polydentate ligand. So, in order to avoid any confusion regarding the naming of these ligands, we actually keep them very distinct. For example, here we have dichlorido that corresponds to two chloride ligands and bis-ethane-1,2-diamine which corresponds to two molecules of ethylene diamine, which as we know is a polydentate ligand. So, remember this is purely to make it clearer or to avoid any kind of confusion between the naming of polydentate and monodentate ligands. So, the naming of this particular complex would be dichlorido bis ethane 1 2 diamine, which is the name of the ligand that we have, followed by the name of the central metal ion. Now, here we don't have any anionic group, so we end the naming with the metal ion. Now, another thing that we need to remember or keep in mind is that when we have polyatomic ligands like ammonia or water, we usually enclose them in brackets like this. For example, in this particular complex, we enclose a polyatomic ligand ammonia within brackets but not chloride group. So this is again a small distinction that we need to keep in mind. Okay. So that's pretty much about how to do the naming of ligands. Let's now look at the naming of central atom. Right. After ligands comes the central atom. In the case of central atom, we always need to write it along with its oxidation number. For example, when we have a neutral or cationic complex like this, the name of this particular complex would be triamine, triaqua, that which refer to the two different ligands, chromium 3. We all know how to find the oxidation number of chromium here, right? Suppose X is the oxidation state of chromium, then we have 0 and 0 because these are neutral ligands and then we have three chloride ions here and the overall charge is 0. So, this would give X as plus 3. So, here remember the central metal is always written along with the oxidation state. So, this is when we have neutral or cationic complex. What about anionic complex? Suppose we have an anionic complex like K4FeCN6. So, this has the charge FeCN6 4 minus, right? When we have anionic complexes, the name of the central metal will end with 8. Okay, so let's try naming this coordination compound. So, what was the first thing that we saw? The first thing is to write the name of the cation. And if you break up this coordination compound, we know that this is the cationic part and this is the anionic part, right? So, the name would be first potassium that refers to the cationic part. Now, we need to focus on the anionic part which is our coordination entity. So, within the coordination entity, we said that first we have to name the ligands and then we have to name the central metal atom, right? Now, here we have six cyano group. And when we have anionic ligands, the name ends with O, correct? So, that would be potassium hexacyano. Hexacyano would refer to six cyano groups. And now that the ligands are over, we have to look at the central metal ion. So, the name of the central metal atom should end with an 8 because it is a anionic complex. So, here it would be potassium hexacyanoferrate. And what is the oxidation state? 2. I'm going to let you calculate that, okay? So, the name of this particular complex is potassium 
hexacyanoferrate 2. Now a small thing that you need to remember is that we don't put any space between the ligand and the metal atom. Okay, hexacyanoferrate is almost like a single word. We have space only between the cationic and the anionic part. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, let's quickly look at one more example. All right. Okay, so let's try to name this particular coordination compound. So first we have to name the cationic part. Correct. The cationic part here is nothing but potassium and this is the anionic part, right? So the name here would begin with potassium. Now what we have here is an anionic complex. We saw that within any coordination entity, we first have to name the ligand and then the central metal. Now if we have a negatively charged ligand, then it would end with O and if it is a neutral or cationic ligand, the name almost always remains same except in the case of few ligands like aqua for water, amine for ammonia and so on. So what is the ligand that we have here? OH group, which as we know is a negatively charged group. And how many such groups are there? We have four groups. So that means the name of the ligand here would be tetrahydroxo. Alright, so the ligands are sorted and now we need to move on to the metal. In an anionic complex, we just saw that the name of the central metal atom would end with an 8. So here the metal is zinc and that means it should end with zincate. Okay, no space here, alright, no space here. And what is the oxidation state of zinc in this? We have 2 plus x plus 4 into minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is 2. Correct? So the oxidation state is zinc 2. So the final name of this particular compound would be potassium tetrahydroxo zincate 2. Remember no space between the metal atom and the ligand names. Okay. So let's practice naming a few more compounds in the next video.